The arrival of Ethereum 2.0 is one of the most anticipated events in the future for blockchain technology. This is when Ethereum actually realizes its full potential, becomes a worldwide computer that is fast, scalable, and ready for mass adoption. But when is it actually going to arrive? It feels like every time we see a date come out, it keeps getting delayed. Well, in this video, I want to talk about an updated timeline for the arrival of Ethereum 2.0 based on some recent comments from Vitaly Buterin himself, the mastermind behind Ethereum. You know, when it might actually get here, what's coming up on Ethereum's roadmap in the future, what to expect from Ethereum 2.0, the merge, and so much more. I'm going to talk about this as a blockchain developer who works the Ethereum protocol on a daily basis and also an ETH holder myself. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about E2.0 when it's actually going to arrive. Because like I said before, every time we hear a date, it seems like that date keeps getting pushed back. So we're talking about some updates and also some context about when this needs to happen. But just for some context, let's talk about what E2.0 is and what you can expect in the near future. So E2.0 is part of a big upgrade for Ethereum. But what I want to talk about right now is actually the merge for Ethereum when it transitions to proof of stake. This is one of the most hotly anticipated events in Ethereum's history because that's when the Ethereum cryptocurrency itself can become fully deflationary and it'll likely have an impact on the price. So more on that in the video, we'll explain that, talk about E2.0 full roadmap. But for now, when I say the arrival of Ethereum 2.0, what I'm saying is this next major event on the ETH 2.0 roadmap. And so to get an update on when this particular part is going to happen, I want to play a quick clip from the Defiant podcast where they actually interviewed Vitalik Buterin when he was asked this question about, hey, what's the state of the merge? Are we ready to go? When can we actually expect this? Generally, people are feeling uh, very good about the merge right now. It's just uh, you know, a bunch of technical work, a bunch of testing. Um, a bunch more testing um, and uh, you know hopefully we're going to be merging pretty soon some people are saying june some people say i uh, saying july or august i don't know all right so from vitalik's own words you know the merge looks like it's basically ready to go there's just some last minute testing that has to get done and that we could expect it maybe sometime in june maybe sometime in august but this is actually different from a lot of people's expectations a lot of people have been saying that hey we were hoping that ethereum 2.0 at least from what we've heard before is going to arrive in q2 of 2022 and it looks like the most optimistic scenario based on this answer would be q2 22 and probably much later than that and maybe not even within the range that he talked about here so first of all, I'm just going to pause and say like utmost respect for what Ethereum is building here, utmost respect for Vitalik. This is an insanely hard thing to accomplish. I can tell you this is a software engineer myself that like anything in software is really hard to nail and get right. And you take that complexity and multiply it by basically a million when you're talking about actually building public blockchains that work, that are scalable, that have smart contracts that are actually useful to other people and are ready to secure billions and billions and billions of dollars on top of it, not to mention the fact that you're building this in a completely decentralized way with developers across the world that just don't work for a company. It's like all decentralized. That's the ethos of what Ethereum's doing here. And that's incredibly hard. So part of this is you have this trade-off of time for decentralization or speed for decentralization. So so utmost respect in that in that regard. But this timeline is a little bit of a departure from what a lot of people's expectations were. And for this reason, a lot of people are thinking of this as a delay. Yeah, another delay in the arrival of Ethereum 2.0. All right. So even though we're seeing, you know, what could be a delay here, I think that it's going to be well worth the wait. Okay. Especially for Ethereum 2.0 in its final form, which we'll talk about here more in a minute, but particularly for the merge event. And that's people are really uh, focused on because that can actually have an impact on the price of Ethereum, the cryptocurrency or Ether itself. Okay, so let me explain how that's going to happen. So I'll put this up on my whiteboard here, uh, basically how the Ethereum blockchain works right now, because right now it's it uses mining, which is proof of work. We have miners on the chain right now, uh, and that's going to be, you know, whenever we move to proof of stake, we're not going to have miners anymore. All right, they're going to become validators. Okay, so let's talk about how miners or validators get paid right now. These are the people who run nodes and are financially incentivized to help maintain the blockchain infrastructure because they get paid, you know, passive income reward uh, for doing this, okay? We'll say the cryptocurrency they earn for being a miner or a validator is paid really with two ways, all right? One is called the block reward. So that basically means whenever, you know, uh, new transactions are created in the blockchain, um, that basically new cryptocurrency itself 
is created by the blockchain. Like the blockchain itself makes new cryptocurrency uh, and it sends it to the validator. Okay. And also whenever you send a transaction, you know, it, it goes to the chain um, and it gets mined and, and, you know, the blockchain creates new cryptocurrency, but then also you pay fees. Okay. And your fee uh, is also going to the miners. Okay. So now Ethereum is implements on the EIP 1559. We're burning fees. Okay. We have uh, part of that fee gets burned. So it gets split up. That's why I put a fork in the road here. So part of your fee gets burnt and part of it goes to the miners. Um, so whenever we go to proof of stake from proof of work to proof of stake, that block reward that I'm talking about is going to get reduced drastically. It's pre-programmed in the blockchain and we move to proof of stake. This block reward is going to get reduced a lot. So you might have heard about Ethereum's triple halving event. All right. That's because um, that talks about how much ETH is getting created per block on an annualized basis, talking about the inflationary amount. So right now, um, you know, basically we're talking about ETH going from about 4% of inflation per year down to 2%, down to 1%, you know, down to 0.5%. From 4 to 2, that's 1. 2 to 1 is 2. And then 1 to 1. 1 to 0.5 is 3. That's triple halving. So just based on that alone, that means that um, that would make ETH 0.5% inflationary per year. But if you actually add the fee burning on top of here that's happening with this new upgrade theorem, EIP 1559, then that actually assuming that the network utilization at least stays the same as it is now that's going to make ethereum the cryptocurrency or ether net deflationary on an annualized basis which assuming that the demand for ether the asset itself just stays constant then that has a positive uh effect on the price of ether and that's why you know proof of stake is you know one of the most hotly anticipated uh events on ethereum 2.0's roadmap also in addition to eth itself just becoming a native staking asset and it becoming totally liquid where if you have it you hold ether or you can stake it, get that extra income just for holding it. All right, so now that's just the next big item on Ethereum 2.0's roadmap, okay? So let me explain the entire roadmap for Ethereum 2.0. So it really is a part of a multi-phase rollout. So we have uh, a new blockchain being built right now, which is Ethereum 2.0. It actually exists today. It's called the Beacon Chain. And if you're using Ethereum right now today, you're using Ethereum 1.0. And what's actually gonna happen whenever we have this merge and proof of stake gets turned on is this beacon chain over here that's active is going to get merged back into the theory that you know and use today. And then we'll all actually be using uh, a kind of half-baked version of Ethereum 2.0. Now, that sounds kind of irreverent. But what I mean is it's not in its total final form. And the final form is going to require, you know, another big item on the roadmap, which is going to be part of sharding, which is basically making a blockchain of blockchains. This is how you get a big scalability benefit uh, for Ethereum. Now, we don't have to wait for Ethereum 2.0 to ship in its final form with sharding completely intact. Okay, before you can get a massive benefit for scaling out of Ethereum now, it's one of the biggest complaints about Ethereum is that it's too slow, it's too expensive to use. You know, you can fix a lot of those problems now with layer two scaling solutions. That's going to be the predominant paradigm for using Ethereum long term anyway, even after ETH 2.0 fully ships is to have a very fast, scalable, decentralized base layer. But then most consumer facing activities likely going to interact on some of the layer two on top of that that takes advantage of the full security and decentralization of the base layer. You can use that base layer directly if you want to, but a lot of people are just going to stick with the faster, cheaper transactions on top of it. And so the full form of ETH 2.0 is still years away, but you can still get that benefit of scalability and lower fees now. And so if you want to further visualize how the stuff that I'm talking about works and also keep track on the progress of this and see, you know, what's happening with the Ethereum ecosystem, how is it progressing, then I want to show you some tools right now that's really going to help with that. So the first website is definitely Ultrasound Money, which is going to help really visualize in real time what I was talking about before, like new Ether being created by the blockchain to pay miners slash validators, and then how much is getting burned when different transactions are now created, uh, you know, from those fees. And then after the merge, what's that's going to look like? So basically right now on the left that you can see that uh, currently the Ethereum blockchain before the merge is, uh, you know, with EIP 1559 is issuing about 5.4 million Ether per year. Okay. And so that's, that's the annualized block subsidy. And we're just with the current network activity right now, it's burning about 2.5 million Ether per year. So we're producing more Ether than we're, you know, we're, we're, we're burning or us using up. So therefore it is, you know, net inflationary and you can see it's by, you know, the ether supply is increasing by about 2.4% per year. But if you just look at the past 30 day burn here and you simulate the merge, then that's actually going to make, it's going to flip the tide and say it's minus 
uh, 1.7% inflationary or 1.7% deflationary on an annualized basis. And you can even change the time frame. You want to see what that looks like based on past seven days data, past one day data, one hour, one, you know, five minutes, whatever it is, whatever interval I'm looking at here, it shows, uh, you know, net deflation with the merge simulation, even at some of the relatively lower gas prices that we've seen over the past maybe 30 days or so. And we can even further see this breakdown uh, spreadsheet from croissant.eth here, uh, who puts out a couple different, you know, assumptions and puts some numbers together, runs through the spreadsheet to see what that will look like in terms of actual net sell pressure from the blockchain itself on ETH. So it's saying the, the only blow off top we'll see soon is the chart of ETH circulating supply after the merge. Okay, so EIP-1559 is on pace to burn 3% ETH annually. On top of this, the merge will drop emissions by more than 90%. That's what we're talking about a second ago. So TLDR, that's a net yearly sell pressure decrease of uh, 7 million Ether or about $20 billion. And likewise, if you want to track what's going on with the Ethereum Layer 2 space, like I was talking about before, basically you don't have to wait for Ethereum 2.0 to fully arrive to make Ethereum faster and cheaper to use as a Layer 2 scaling solutions are for. You go to L2B.com and check out the different projects there. Uh, some of the top ones to look at are definitely Arbitrum and Optimism, uh, ZK Sync, and a lot of others. These are general purpose Layer 2s where developers can basically you know, port their applications over uh, without any code changes, all right, as opposed to application specific layer twos. And you can see the growth of this ecosystem as well. You know, if I zoom out on a year timeline, uh, this is this is pretty pretty massive, okay? So like we've leveled off a little bit, but that's just kind of the nature of the entire crypto space since the beginning of the year. Um, that's in ETH terms, okay? If you, if you load it in default um, with USD terms, you'll see it looks like, you know, more a little bit more of a downtrend. Um, well, that's because it's based on TVL or total value loss. And, you know, because the crypto prices have gone down over the past few months, it's going to make all the TVL just by US dollar terms look like it's declining. Um, and the TVL is, but that doesn't necessarily, you know, speak to the user adoption as much. That's why I like to keep it in ETH terms, okay? So even this can go down if it's talking about uh, token value that they're bleeding against. ETH TVL is not a perfect metric by any stretch of the imagination, but still a pretty cool indication to see, you know, how this uh, network, these networks are growing. All right, so that's an overview of what's going to happen for the Ethereum 2.0 roadmap, what you should expect about the merge for Ethereum to proof of stake, and when this could happen and, you know, based on recent comments from Vitalik Buterin himself, you know, the mastermind behind Ethereum. So again, you know, this is defying like those expectations. We were hoping that this would be in Q2 of 2022. It looks like that's probably the most optimistic scenario at the tail end. It's probably going to be later than that. Okay, so as always, a ton of respect here for what they're creating. This is way harder than it looks. I can tell you there's a software engineer who works with this technology all the time. You know, building an app's hard enough, but try multi-net, multiplying that problem by a million to build public blockchain infrastructure where people can securely store billions and billions and billions on dollars on top of it. I think it's be well worth the wait. Uh, because of what I was talking about here, uh, whenever we see the merge actually successfully executed and ETH can become a deflationary asset, it's going to be more attractive for people to hold it uh, because, you know, it's going to be less every single year and you can stake it, you know, earn yield, all that type of stuff natively on the blockchain in a censorship resistant decentralized way. It's a huge win. So that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so that more people learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a massive shortcut entirely, I can show you to become a blockchain master step-by-step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So... That's all I've got. Hence, next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.